Arthur Reiser joins me now. He's director of the Criminal Justice and Civil Liberties Program at the R Street Institute. He's also a former federal prosecutor and a former patrol officer. We're so fortunate to have you here. Thank you for taking the time. As a former law enforcement officer, when you see the video of that now former officer, Derek Chauvin, kneeling on George Floyd's neck, I'm just interested in what goes through your mind. It's a tragedy. I mean, I really believe that this is the exact type of you know thing that we see when we saw see other types of crime happen on surveillance videos. What we saw, uh, for all accounts, appears to be a murder that played out in real time, and it's like a gross cliche that just that pops into the American uh, social media, the American news every so often. Every couple months, we have another. Um, individual who is uh, killed by the police unnecessarily. And until we get to the root of what's actually causing these problems, we're going to have a very hard time ever really overcoming this. And I do want to ask you about the root of this and, and how we can affect lasting change. Uh, but I do have to ask you, as a former prosecutor, the third degree murder, second degree manslaughter charge against that sure. officer, former officer, now seen kneeling on George Floyd's neck. Are those the right charges? I know George Floyd's family wants first degree murder. I don't think first degree murder is the appropriate charge either. I think there's, it looks like a malice murder to me. I mean, I could take that and go to trial on malice murder, which would be second degree murder. Malice is the way we would say it in common law. Uh, that looks like a second degree murder. It looks like a murder that happened intentionally, but you didn't plot it out. There was no premeditation um, or deliberation. Now, if if, if a, a prosecutor thinks that he can go that way and there's something that we don't know about, uh, maybe there's some type of evidence that the police officer, you know, plotted this and thought about it beforehand, then maybe I'm wrong. But from what we can see right now, I don't think th third degree really seems like the proper charge either. It really does seem like it's a second, a classic second degree murder. You know, second degree murder, the easiest way to understand it is you knew better and you did it anyways. That's malice murder. And that seems like what's going to happen there. For eight minutes, you choke someone out with your knee. I mean, officers, if anybody understands that when you go after the carotid artery, that is a death blow. Um, we're taught in the academy that if you hit into the neck, that is deadly force. And to do it for eight minutes, think about it. Eight minutes is a very long time. It takes a long time to actually strangle someone. And that is exactly what happened in this case. And it's a tragedy um, for you know the, the whole city of Minneapolis. Absolutely. Um, it, it's just devastating and, and heartbreaking. Um, you told The Atlantic recently, quote, and I think we have uh, the full screen we can put up. You create this world where you're not just militarizing the police. You equip the police like soldiers. You train the police like soldiers. Why are you surprised when they act like soldiers? The mission of the police is to protect and serve, but the premise of this soldier is to engage the enemy in close combat and destroy them. When you blur those lines together with statements like that, it's an absolute breakdown of civil society. So my question to you is, how can we as a country change that? So this is something that is really deep. People very often focus on the equipment when it comes to police militarization, the AR-15s, M4s, whatever you want to call them. And those things can be troubling, and those are things that we should talk about. But what really is troubling is the, the soldier mentality. And I was a soldier, too. I served in Iraq um, in the United States Army. And the, 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 the actual creed of the infantrymen is I stand ready to engage the enemy in close combat and destroy them. And when police officers start to think like that, that is incredibly dangerous. And what I've noticed, and I've done a lot of research, I've, I've, I've been working on a research project, project through the University of Oxford for almost six years. I've ridden with numerous officers, spent almost 300 hours. And what I've noticed is that officers feel like they're at war. And when officers feel like they're at war, then the entire uh, their whole concept changes and they they actually will start acting like they're at war so it's not the military equipment that we should be afraid of it is the the military mentality that we should be worried about and that is something that is dribbling out through the united states and it's been happening for a long time and it's just like now that we have it on camera that we're scared about it but you know quite frankly black folk have been facing this problem 
for a very long time in the United States. So, so what would, uh, is this something that uh, could be changed through, like, legislators? I mean, how, how do we go about yeah. changing this? Yeah, it's the generational issue. That's the that's the hard part. You have to change police culture. You can't just change police training and expect everything to be better. You know, because you know you 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 hire a rookie, they go through the academy, okay, and then they get to their FTO card, their field, field training officer, and then they're indoctrinated with the new police culture, and that hasn't changed. Police culture really hasn't changed since forever, basically, and so we have to actually think about how we're going to change police culture and the way that we do that is you know a couple mechanisms one you go after bad cops i something that was played out by uh the attorney that you just showed the clip of talking about bad apples th that something that happens that we always miss is the whole saying is bad apples ruins the barrel if you are a good cop and you witness bad cops you are no longer a good cop you are now a bad cop and until we change the way the police officers think about it i mean the military did it I mean, I, the military had a terrible rep, rep, reputation in the 60s and 70s. And as they moved into the 80s, they professionalized the military. And now it's the most respected institution in America. And it has been since like 1992. And they did it through, you know, making it a professional force. We need to do the same thing with policing in the United States. And listen, I love cops. I was a cop. I care about cops. Most cops just want to do good work and go home to their families. But we have to stop the cor uh, corrosive police culture that is, you know, moving through this country. We have to do something about it, and we have to do something about it now. Arthur Reiser, uh, thank you so, so much for your insight. Uh, you have some incredible perspective from being both a former uh, federal prosecutor and a patrol officer and a retired lieutenant uh, colonel in the Army. Thank you for your service. Uh, really appreciate you joining thank us you. today. Thank you.